Hello everyone, welcome to Restoring Hope Breakfast. My name is Blaze. I'm so excited that you are here with us today. If you joined us last year, you might recognize me. It was my honor and privilege to share my story with you last year. And now I'm excited to be the one to welcome you back this year. After sharing my story with you last year, I've been building the Masinga Foundation to help people in the more, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, my home country. There is a saying in Africa that it takes many years to build a house and it takes many years to become CVT and to reach as many people as CVT does but the work is not done. I am so proud of the work that you and I are doing to help survivor of torture. It really does take all of us as a team to build that house. I've learned that in life there are things we do because we need money, and then there are things we do because of our passion. And now, that is why each and every one of us here today, because we are passionate about helping survivors of torture. In 2014, when I was a client of CVT sitting in a room with my therapist, I could not have imagined that today I am now the one who is working with in service of other survivors. I remember one day, my therapist said to me, Blaze, I believe in you. You have so much to offer. My brain didn't understand that at the time. I was stateless, hopeless, without anything. And then she said to me, you can go to university. It was only a dream then. Having been in that room, I've learned that support is a life-changing event. There's nothing more important than to step into the life of a survivor. Trauma is a killer. Torture kills your mind, your body, your whole life. When you are in that place, CVT becomes like a parent to you. The people at CVT make you feel welcome and happy. They help you feel hope, even if that hope seems impossible. That's what CVT has done for me. Every time I had an appointment to go to CVT, I was the happiest man. Now, it all makes sense what my therapist had said to me. Went to university, got a master's degree, restarted my career in the banking, and I'm running my own foundations. Just a few days ago, I had my interview to become an American citizen. Standing here in front of you today as an American citizen is an incredible milestone for me. Today, as we celebrate the healing work of CVT, you will hear updates and see what your support means to survivors around the world. It is important that you understand the powerful impact you help make possible. And now, some important thank yous. Even though we can't hear you, Let's still give a huge round of applause for the most amazing group of people who truly make this event possible. Our table captains, thank you. Double captain for inviting people who are passionate and ready to learn more about the center of, of victim of torture. Today's sponsors made it possible to hold this event in this studio socially distanced so you can be right there in your home or office safe and relaxed. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Integrated Direct Marketing. 
IDM has demonstrated that business and human rights can go hand in hand. Thank you to our supporting sponsors listed on your screen. And finally, thank you to our associate sponsors also listed in your screen. Because of your generosity of these special sponsors, all of the contribution you make today will go directly to support life-changing and life-saving care for survivor of torture. Thank you. Thank you, CVT Board of Directors. Many of you are also table of captain today. We especially appreciate your leadership and all incredible work you do. In just a moment, you will get to meet CVT new president, CEO, Dr. Simon Adams, who will share his inspiring story and his vision for CVT. But first, we have a short video for you. The first client came to my mind is uh, a 10 years old child. His name is Malik. Uh, I would like to pick one person that I've worked with and I prefer to call him James. I remember the first thing that he told me is that why everyone has a father but not me. James had a longer time to live together with the, the perpetrator of his torture. And then he he come like to uh, hold uh, my hands and start crying. James at the beginning was so much timid, looking cool, but this coolness was just plastic. He have this anger and this sadness inside of himself and he feel responsible also for the family. And then he told me in that session that now he have nothing. Now later on, after our services, I could see different changes in James, speaking like a mature man with authority to control his life with the hope of progress in terms of working for himself, working for his family. What inspired me is how like a 10 years old child who came with angry and crying, he showed the resilience, he showed the brave, uh, he supports other children in the group. Like Malik, there is millions of children now need our, our specialized services. There's a lot of mothers who is missing their children and they know nothing about them. We need to combine hands. There are many, many James type. So we need a concerted effort. We need support. There is refugees and millions of refugees everywhere. So I still hope that we still can reach out. Life is not static. Living today is not about what happens to you yesterday and whatever happened to you in the past. Life is determined that by each and every moment that we live. Hello, I'm Simon Adams. I'm honoured that my first official engagement as the incoming President and CEO of the Centre for Victims of Torture is joining you for this remarkable Restoring Hope breakfast. I begin by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from the Dakota and Ojibwe homelands. We recognise their unceded sovereignty and we honour their elders who have been the custodians of this land throughout the generations. A warm welcome to guests from all around the world. From North America to the Middle East to Africa, CVT's reach is truly global. As for me, I'm a child of conflict and diaspora. My family is from Northern Ireland, but because of the troubles, we've been scattered around the world. I grew up in four different countries as my family embarked upon a continuous process of immigration and trying to build a better life. In Northern Ireland in the 1970s, some of my relatives were detained and subjected to some of the British Army's five techniques or so-called deep interrogation methods. These practices were later condemned by the European Human Rights Commission as constituting torture. These were not just obscure legal judgments or disturbing news stories for some of us. These were people we knew and a trauma that was buried deep inside our families 
and our communities. In the 1980s, I joined the international movement against apartheid in South Africa. While living in Johannesburg, I worked alongside friends who had survived torture. One of them, Mac, spent 12 years in prison with Nelson Mandela. Mac is a giant of South African history and helped draft the country's democratic constitution. He's a hero of mine. But I've also seen Mac at his most vulnerable. He has quietly whispered about the dark and destructive impact that torture had on him. Recalling his experiences could still overwhelm him. I joined CBT after completing a decade leading the Global Center for the Responsibility to Protect, an organization founded by former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan and others. The Global Center is dedicated to preventing atrocity crimes around the world. And in that role, I worked with torture survivors from Syria, Myanmar, and elsewhere. I also engaged with UN investigative bodies regarding these crimes against humanity. These life experiences have left their indelible imprint on me as an activist and as a human being. You and I know that torture is not just about a perpetrator and a victim. It is not only something that happens in the dark cell of a detention facility. The pain radiates across the lives of family and friends. And the fact that torture still exists in the world in the year 2021 diminishes all of us, which is why I say that the importance of CVT's mission has never been more relevant to heal the wounds of torture on individuals, their families and their communities, and to end torture worldwide. We are living through a unique moment in history this horrible pandemic has taken people from us, disrupted all our lives, and it's meant CVT has been unable to say yes to some survivors who have asked for our help. Today, more than 82.4 million people around the world are displaced by persecution, conflict, and atrocities, the highest number since World War II. That includes more than 26 million refugees and asylum seekers. It also includes unimaginable numbers of torture survivors, like Blaze. So now is the time to enhance our impact and influence. We are uniquely placed to help reshape the global conversation around eradicating torture, pursuing justice, and promoting human rights. And of course, our life-changing clinical treatment programs will remain at the heart of what we do. It'll take $28.7 million this year to provide 30,000 survivors and family members with the healing they desperately need. On average, that's about $1,000 to change somebody's life. Unfortunately, for every survivor we say yes to, there are thousands more awaiting our support and care. Your incredible generosity contributes about six million of that 28 million that fund CVT's mission. Increasing from six to eight or $10 million will accelerate our ability to rapidly respond to emerging crises. It will expand programs that train other organizations and activists, and it will allow CVT to say yes to many more survivors like Blaze. And while doing this, we will also increase our ability to expose torture and advocate for policies to hold the perpetrators accountable. No matter where the future takes us, CVT will always be a place that uplifts people. Because you and I know that CVT is about so much more than treating the symptoms of torture. CVT is about confronting the systems that sustain it. CVT is a community of commitment. CVT is me, you, Blaze, and all the other people who make up this unique circle of healing and hope. In Jordan, Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, and here in the United States, our survivor friends and families rely on CVT, and we rely on you. I look forward to taking the next steps together. Thank you. It's hard for me to remember things if I don't take the picture of it. The only thing I remember in my head until I die, this is my story everywhere. I can't forget about it because that's an unforgettable story. My name is Fatumata Salif. I was born in Ganta, Nimba County, Liberia. I want to tell you my story today in the way that you will remember it, in the way you will be able to tell the others 
I was 15 years old, not knowing anything about life. When my auntie told me, we're going to second side you, that had they call it second side. So what part of me? They say, you will know. And they took me there. They did what they have to do. I don't want to say that, but after they did that, when they opened my eyes, I saw the others. We were there for like three months, no medication. I'm 15 years, but I will fight for your daughter. If they wants to kill me, they will kill me, but I will fight for her. I want to do it, and I, it's in my mind that I will do it. After a while, my mom died. When my mother died, I have my first born. But struggles began. They found my daughter. They want to take their daughter to the society bush. I said, but she's only 11. She can't. They say she will. If you are telling the others not to go, we take your daughter. I stay doing what I have to do in secret. Sometimes it's not in secret. Like those group behind me, I'm walking in front of them. If I say I'm going somewhere with people that support me, they will follow me, we go. We gather people. They don't like it. They don't like it. They grabbed me for the last time. That was not easy. I have this all on my leg. They put iron on the fire, right in the fire, get red, and put it between my legs and close it on. That was one of the days for me. I thought I was going to die. That was my last chance to give me. We apply for visa. I say, how would I live? I got four kids. Who's going to take care of them? I will help you. I said, how come? How would I go to the United States? I don't know no one there. She said, we can get some friends. They gave me my visa. to get in. I call my daughter, she came. I said, Mama, she said, yes. I said, will you be able to take care of Joseph? She said, Mom, I will try. I said, Mama, you got to be strong, you know. I have to leave before I die. She said, Mom, go. I will take care. I left them. Okay. I left the children. When I came 
him, she took it on me. She's the one who went to him all right. They recommended me to CVT. They did a lot of things for me, CVT. A lot of things in life that you're going to say, okay, this person was tortured before. I'm trying to put a person back to life. I spent like over five years there because the law was too much on me and my children. We didn't know we could make it. We didn't know. But you guys make us make it happen. But the rest of my life is like I'm praying. I have my kids with me. I got my own house. I drive my own car. Hello, I am Fatumata. I'm honored and grateful to be here today with you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to what I want to say. I will never forget that day my auntie took me to the bush. That day changed the rest of my life. When I was 15 years old, I promised my, own, my cousin mom I could fight for her. I mean it, I'm 53 years old now. I have never stopped fighting for her. All other girls, even though it makes life really hard for me, when I came, out of the boat, the first time they said that I could tell anybody what happened to me. But I have to say something. That's why they took me to the boat the second time to make me stop talking, but I couldn't stop. Standing with you here today, I still won't stop talking about it. Leaving my children in Guinea was the hardest thing I have ever done. But I have to do what I have to do. I left to go to Minnesota. Once I arrived here, slowly, I started coming to myself again. I started to dream for my future. I took English classes. I went to school to become a CNA, Certified Nursing Assistant. I started going to school to become a nurse again. But I got sick. I had to do much. I was providing for my children and have to work and it had felt a lot of stress. I was once in class. One day, everything went so blurry. The teacher asked me what was wrong, and I told her. They took me to the hospital. That when I learned I have diabetes. My emergency contact was CVT. Being separated from the children had the harder than the violin. The illness, feeling lonely. Mothers should never be separated from their children. You lose feeling little by little. 
My youngest was only two years when I left. So, CVT gave me money to talk to my children every week. When I could call, I'm I was afraid to talk to my son. He didn't pay attention to me. After a second, he liked, bye. He dropped the phone and was gone. But CVT helped me. Dr. Rosa taught me how to talk to my son. She teach me to say, when you come to the United States, we will have snow. You are going to be good. I'm your mom. You know I love you, right? Then he said, yep, yep. I know. Okay, bye. It took eight years to be reunited with my children. My youngest did not even know who I was. I slept with the guilt. I blamed myself. I did. I left them. It's my fault. But then I remember that Rosa said to me, it's not your fault. Sometimes when I sit, I see my kids with me, I cry because I never thought that could happen. My heart is overcome with joy and my kids, they are okay. I take Dr. Rosa with me everywhere I go. She taught me how to do a lot of things. If I forget my water, I say, okay, Dr. Rosa, need, need me take my water. If I'm crying, I hear her, take a break, take a deep breath, you will come back to yourself. I use what I learned from CVT in my workplace memory care unit. Sometimes my patients got very upset, but because of what, of my, my life, I really understand what they are going through. We practice taking deep breath together. I bring water to them. We go outside together, we feel better. I'm here today to thank you for showing me what I'm not alone. I have my children, brothers and sisters. I'm grateful to be here with you. Thank you for caring about people who have experienced torture. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you for listening to my story. Hello, I'm Mary T. I'm proud to be a member of the CVT Board of Directors. I'm even prouder to be a longtime partner and supporter in their great work. Thank you, Fatu, for sharing your story with us. It is truly a story of courage. I had the privilege of being introduced to the Center for Victims of Torture in the 1990s. I visited our work in refugee camps in Guinea, West Africa, home to survivors who fled their countries of Sierra Leone and Liberia. I traveled to CVT's Healing Center in Jordan, where I met survivors from Iraq, Syria, and Sudan. In Kenya, I learned from the staff of CVT the model, the power of the river of life exercise, and the power of physical therapies to heal the bodies of survivors. And in Gulu, Uganda, I was introduced to the numerous local groups that work cooperatively with CVT to assist the children, now adults, caught in the child-soldier war. Across the world, I have seen firsthand how CVT makes a difference in the lives of people and their stories of survival, which is why I'm so proud to stand here today before you to invite you to be part of this life-changing and life-saving work. 
This has truly been a year of crisis and exhaustion. And when we feel powerless, remember what Mr. Rogers said. Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. We are the helpers. We don't look away when things get really hard. We stand up and fight for what we know in our hearts and our minds to be right. What the world needs right now is for people who care about each other. What the world needs right now is you. And as Simon described, CVT is this community of commitment. And as a community together, we must make certain that CVT has the financial resources to say yes to all survivors. You know, our giving make up about six million of the 28 million CVT operations. But what we've learned is that when we increase that six million to eight million or even 10 million, things change. We'll be able to respond when a crisis arises, bringing our expertise and experience to people who need us the most. We will help strengthen human rights by supporting and training partner organizations and activists. We will say yes to 1,000 more survivors in more places around the world. And eventually, when we are able to do all that is needed, our dream of a world free from torture will finally become reality. To achieve all this future, it takes all of us to believe and to act, to inspire all of us to act today. A passionate group of CVT supporters have made a $187,000 matching gift contribution. Thanks to each of these donors. And now it's time for us to join them. No matter what size your gift is today, you make a difference. Here's how the match works. The $187,000 matching gift applies to anyone who joins our Restoring Hope Society or anyone who extends or renews their current pledge. I know you're eager to help survivors get their lives back. This is important to us. And I personally want to invite you, each of you, to join me as a member of the Restoring Hope Society. What is this group? It's a group of passionate people who pledge an annual contribution of $1,000 a year or more for five years. There are three levels of giving in the Restoring Hope Society. $1,000 a year for five years makes it possible for Amal, a Syrian torture survivor in Jordan, to receive physical therapy. That's just $84 a month to make certain she has regular therapy to reduce her debil debilitating chronic pain so she can hold her child. $5,000 a year for five years covers the cost of group therapy for Yusuf and nine other survivors of torture in Ethiopia, where they'll learn that they're not alone and that torture is not the end of their story. And finally, $10,000 a year for five years provides care and support to a single torture survivor in the United States, like Fatu. Your gift of $10,000 a year will help one person put the trauma of their past behind them and look ahead to a life filled with opportunity. When we make a five-year commitment, we make it possible for CVT to say yes to more survivors. Before we share the contribution link with you, let us take a look at what you'll see when you click on that link. To become a new Restoring Hope Society member, click the first box. Once a year, we'll invite you to join the Restoring Hope Society. And today, your new contribution and your five-year pledge will be matched dollar for dollar. For those of you who are already Restoring Hope Society members, click the second box. When you increase or extend your pledge today, that new portion of your pledge will be matched. You'll be able to enter that in any amount that you want to increase your annual gift or the number of years that you want to continue to pledge. So a special thanks to the 117 people who are already a part of our Restoring Hope Society. I invite each of you to make a gift towards your current pledge by clicking on this box. For those of you who would like to make a contribution at any other level, click this third box. And the fourth box is for, the, for those of you who want to do something different. Donate stock, IRA, mail a check, or use your donor advised fund. So fill out this form and we will put you in touch 
with the helpful staff at CBT. What I'd like to welcome every one of you into the Restoring Hope Society, I understand you may not be able to do that today. But remember, no matter, no matter, and know this, your gift matters. You matter, no matter how much you contribute today. So today, our job was to inspire you to take action to inspire you to allow CVT to say yes again and again and again. So as you click on the link and you make a donation, you're deciding how you're going to put your values into action and to stand up for survivors of torture. And I want to ask you one more question, one important question. Is today the day that you will do a little bit more and make a difference? Is today the day that you will choose to do something big? And if it's not today, what day? And if it's not you, who will? Please click on the red box at the top of your screen that says help a survivor get their life back. Thank you for choosing to show up today. Thank you for, for standing up for what you believe in and for what is right. Thank you for your contributions you are making today 